Welcome everyone to Love My Sheep. I am your host, Miss Lydia, and we are continuing in Season 5, Episode 6, Failing in Faith. In case you are tuning in on a podcast platform and not on the YouTube channel, there is a video series titled Conversations with God in Grief that will have a new episode every weekend until the new year. And the link to that channel is in this show's description. And I will also drop it in the description of this episode if that is of interest to you. There will not be a separate podcast component to that series at this time, and the Lord can change that at any moment. However, the YouTube channel does house this podcast as well as extra content that is not podcasted, if that makes it easier access-wise. However, please take your liberty to tune in and tune out of whatever platform is beneficial to you in your journey with the Lord, and I encourage that greatly. This episode came together this week when I was reflecting on the first video episode of Conversations with God in Grief, and something I had said in that episode, which was reflecting on conversations where there was a hesitance to be authentic. I began to think about that within the context of faith. Not many of us will confess there is a lack of faith, but instead will explain other reasons for our behavior. However, when our faith does take a dive, that is a requirement of the journey. It is not our destination, but we will not be perfect in our faith. God is the perfecter of our faith. So tuning out everything and everyone so that God has the capacity to perfect our faith is the challenge and the objective. In season four, I had spoken about Peter and how Jesus let Peter sink a little. He allowed him to panic and then instructed him what to do. He did not deny Peter the process of faith. The process of faith makes us human, but sharing that process normalizes and encourages others in the process too. Let's look at the birth of John the Baptist and what his father went through after Gabriel prophesied to him about his son. Let's go to Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 5, and we will go through to verse 20. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God, in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall neither, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, 
because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. Amen. Zacharias questioned Gabriel with a very legitimate, logical question in humanness. However, his unbelief led to a loss of speech. And so yes, there are consequences for our, our unbelief, but that does not diminish God's mercy. And Zacharias' speech was restored, and we see that it was his faith that restored it when he confirmed the name John. Earlier this week, I was thinking about Thomas and how we associate doubt with him. But his request was legitimate and logical. After all, would we not respond similarly or think about that response as a reasonable response? Let me read John chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. Now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. And this is just it. Jesus did not need to prove himself to Thomas or comply with his request. But he mercifully did as Thomas requested. And he requested Thomas to believe. He also made the distinction that those who believe without seeing are blessed. Faith is not easy. And I have discussed the loneliness of the journey of faith earlier this season. But when we are already physically alone in our grief, faith truly is an incredible and elusive companion when our faith is in God. We will have our moments when we are challenged in it. And truthfully, the sooner we address those doubts by saying them out loud like Zacharias and like Thomas, the sooner we will stop living in them or allowing those doubts to be squatters in the crevices of our hearts. Cry them out to the Lord. I have done it. I have also gotten deep with it when I do it. I will declare my faith to the Lord in knowledge and then ask him about my hindrances to walking in faith and to help me to identify my noises and anything that is not of the Lord so I can draw away from them and closer to him. Keeping close to God is no easy feat. And there have been moments where I have been too tired and worn, worn out to be able to formulate a thought that makes sense. There are times that emotions have been exhausting to the point that, oh, you know what? I can't even formulate a tear because I'm numb. And that happens in the prelude to the breakthrough when we think we're hitting rock bottom, when our faith is failing and diving down with us. God sees the heart and he knows what we can and cannot handle in the testing of our faith. He sends encouragement at his appointment. Keeping God first is not easy as well. But if that is truly the desire, 
than when our faith seems to be failing. Trust that God will be the lifeline because he cannot fail. It is not in his character. So how do we navigate in failing faith? It requires a self-examination with the Holy Spirit. We can't do it by ourselves. We will overthink it or overanalyze and our thoughts can be our enemy in the process of that self-examination. So if you need a physical person to help you with that, then take that to the Lord in prayer and ask him to provide someone that is not only trustworthy, but whose heart is aligned with his. The person must be walking circumspectly. The person must desire God's will first and foremost. That is a hard find, but God knows who to bring. And God knows when to bring them to help you. Ask him, where do you need to go? Or ask the Lord if you don't need to go anywhere and just wait and he'll bring that person to you. Father God, I thank you for every listener tuning in. I pray that each person will know and understand that if we are comfortable to ask you for help, that we should be comfortable to ask each other within the family of God for help as well. Let not our past experiences and our insecurities and overthinking be a hindrance in anything. And as we know in your word says that humility precedes honor, let us desire That humility, the type you demonstrated in your son, Jesus. Jesus, humbly you came to this earth. Humbly you lived. Humbly you died. Let us honor you in desiring humble lives for ourselves. In our humility, we know, Father God, you will take care of us. And maybe humility not only precedes honor, but it precedes faith too, when you strip us of our resources, that we cannot rely on anyone else but you. Let our strength come only from you because only you can do it. Only you are the one we are to have faith in because you are faithful, Father God. When we are hindered in our faith, may we look at those moments as opportunities for your glory. Like we have seen in your servants, Zacharias and Thomas, chosen men of you who did not hesitate to vocalize their unbelief and were changed when they did. But change is hard. Help us to not overthink it. Help us to encourage each other in our failures. To know that it's okay part of the journey but God you are not done with any of us so encourage every heart at this moment may they know and feel that you are not done with them may they know how precious they are how loved they are father God to you be all the glory honor and praise in Jesus name amen until next time know that I love you and the Lord loves you the most